Hey guys, today I'll be updating my prediction for the 2024 presidential election for the most likely scenario in 2024, and that of course will be a 2020 rematch between now President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump. So this is actually a pretty likely scenario, as Joe Biden currently is the Democratic frontrunner. He has a 41% chance of winning the nomination, Kamala Harris is in second with 30, and there are really no other major candidates between. Uh, besides other candidates who have run in the past, and AOC is also on that list, so I think it's very, very unlikely that she is going to run. And if Joe Biden decides to run, he will be the nominee of the Democratic Party, even though Joe Biden is the oldest president in American history by far, um, he is still going uh, to continue to be the Democratic nominee if he does choose to run for re-election. So this really is whether or not Joe Biden will be running for re-election. If he runs again, he will get this nomination, but because of his age as well as other factors, um, it may lead to Joe Biden not being able to run for president in 2024. For the GOP, Donald Trump has a similar chance here at 44 cents per share, um, followed in second by Ron DeSantis. So Donald Trump, he is still right now the front runner for the 2024 Republican nomination. His chances have, uh, have peaked quite a bit over the last couple of weeks here as he's getting more active politically uh, once again, and he is holding more rallies and things like that. They may point to a potential 2024 run, and his chances chances of running before 2023 are currently at 48 to 52. So both these candidates right now, this is the most likely scenario, and that is a repeat of the 2020 presidential election. Uh, both candidates would be the oldest candidates in American history, and they would also be both running for a second presidential term, both Donald Trump and Joe Biden. So I'm going to start off by filling in the solid states for both of these candidates. And you can see here, this is the map from 2020. Um, it's pretty standard. Many of the solid states you see here, I will be putting a solid for both Biden and Trump again in 2024. I do not expect much of this to change at all. Um, in four years, uh, there will be no real drastic change. You may see some margins go up and down, but nothing uh, will be too drastic to change really the margins in any of these states. However, for the states of Nebraska and Maine, uh, redistricting will be occurring and the new map will be used in 2024 for their two, con two and three congressional districts. So I will be going over that in just a moment, no major changes, but as of right now, these are the solid Democratic states, and for Donald Trump, of course, the standard solid GOP states, uh, especially in the middle of the country here. And for the state of Nebraska, it's going to be all solid except for that second congressional district, which I will talk about in just a moment. I think Kansas this time will be solid along with the rest of the southern United States. Uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, and West Virginia all going to be solid for the Republican Party. So this gives Joe Biden 181 electoral votes within solid states and 102 for Donald Trump. Uh, before I go into the likely states for both of the presidential candidates um, in this scenario, I do want to take a look at their approval ratings. First for Joe Biden, who is of course the current president and will be incumbent in 2024. His approval rating right now is worse than has ever been. It's at 44.8% and his approval really took a turn for the worst after the Afghanistan crisis in which his approval rating went below uh, the positives for the first time in almost, uh, first time since he took office really in January, um, it went down basically once we hit the month of September and has yet to go up uh, since then. So Joe Biden right now is in the worst spot um, possible if he were to be held, um, if he were to be put up for re-election right now, he would be more vulnerable than he has ever been throughout his entire presidency so far. Now comparing this to Donald Trump though, Joe Biden is still more popular than Donald Trump has ever been for 99% of Trump's presidency. The only only time in which Donald Trump was more popular than Joe Biden is right now was at the very beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic when we had that rally around the leader uh, mentality at the beginning of these crises like in 9-11 when we saw um, George W. Bush's uh, approval rating go up to almost 90% at one point. He basically became the most popular president in American history at that point right after 9-11 and this mentality it was shown to Donald Trump at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic but due to the handling it did drop and after the insurrection at the Capitol and just the 2020 presidential election it fell down to under 40 percent when he left office and the only other 
time in which Trump's approval was better was at the very, very beginning of his presidential term. So as you can see here, it's pretty obvious that Joe Biden is much more popular than Donald Trump. However, as of right now, Joe Biden is not exactly in the best spot. Um, and so looking at this map here, I'm going to start off by taking a look at the two states of Nebraska and Maine. So starting off with the state of Nebraska. So basically in the states of Nebraska and Maine, uh, two electoral votes are given out for the at-large vote in the state. And since Nebraska has three congressional districts, each district gets one additional electoral vote. Um, so basically it's broken up into these three districts. Now this was the old map that we were working with in 2020. In 2024, uh, we have some minor changes changes. Uh, the second, uh, the first district here has actually gotten a little bit smaller, while the third district has expanded. Um, and the second district, this is the competitive district in the state of Nebraska. As you can see, uh, on the old map, it was even between the Democrats and the Republicans. This was a district that Joe Biden was able to win by 6.7%. Um, it was even in 2020. In 2024, the partisan lead will be plus three. And this, of course, is because Omaha is the most Democratic area. Uh, of the state uh, as it is the most urban area. However, in 2024, what they're going to do is they're going to stretch this out. So more of these rural areas, these more Republican areas will be included in that district, which is going to make it um, just a little bit more Republican. Now, although it is more Republican, I will not be changing my categorization. I still think Joe Biden will win it. I will just put it as a tilt margin uh, for the incumbent president because in 2020, he did win it by 6.6%. So I do think that his margin will definitely go down in the second district once it changes, but I do think that he is uh, still going to likely carry the district, one that he flipped uh, for the first time since the Obama era. Uh, now for the second uh, district of Maine, as well as the Maine at large vote, in Maine there was really no big change, um, a very slight change in how this map was drawn. There's only two districts in Maine, so no real changes here. Um, we see a couple points, two, three points shift um, in the partisan lean. I think that at large it's still going to be likely. It was likely in 2020 around 10 percentage points but for the second district i do think that it will be um, another likely victory for donald trump in the second congressional district of maine so this is going to be putting trump up at 103 electoral votes and joe biden at 184 so now i'm going to move on and fill in the likely states for both of the candidates starting off with joe biden colorado and new mexico i think are definitely going to be likely for the incumbent uh he won these states by 13 percent and 10 in 2020. Uh, I think there's really no chance these margins go down to lean, but as of right now, I don't see Colorado going up enough for Biden to win this by a solid margin of over 15%. So this puts Biden at almost 200 electoral votes. I am also going to actually not give him any more states. Those are the only two likely states on this map right now that I have for Joe Biden. As for Donald Trump, I do have quite a few. Starting off with the state of Alaska, state that he won by just under 10% in 2020. And this was a historically bad result uh, for a Republican in the state of Alaska. So he won by 10.1%, so a little bit over 10%. In 2016, he won by 147 percent that was a tolerable margin um in 2012 Mitt Romney won by 14 percent so not exactly the best but in 2008 John McCain won by 21.5 percent 2004 George W Bush by 25.5 percent and in 2000 um George W Bush won by 31 percent so this state is overall trending very far to the left over the last couple of decades I mean 1996 Bob Dole even won by 17.5 percent when he only won 150 nine electoral votes 1992 that was really the only time in which alaska was not solid um red in you know the last couple of decades so in 2020 i think definitely donald trump underperformed in alaska i think that he will get around the same margin in 2024 um i don't think it will go under uh seven percent so i do think it will remain a likely margin but i don't think it'll be anything spectacular especially for a republican in alaska donald trump i will also be giving him indiana and south carolina both as likely states these two states 100 are going to vote for him there's really no way that joe biden uh should 
should even try in, to win in any of these two states. They are very Republican states, but the margin I just don't believe will be over 15%. And the same thing goes for Ohio and Iowa. So these two states used to be swing states. Um, Ohio was the bellwether state. Its bellwether status was broken in 2020, as Donald Trump did win the 2016 presidential election and Ohio. In 2012 and 2008, they were both won by Barack Obama, 4% uh, in 2008 and then 3% in 2012. Before this, of course, George Bush won it 2004 and 2000, and Clinton in 1996 and 1992. So Ohio and Iowa, both these states, honestly, were both very flexible states um, before the Trump area. But after 2016, these two states uh, have gotten more Republican than ever. And Donald Trump, he does do um, better in these states than other Republicans. Um, he did better than uh, Joni Ernst did in Ohio in 2020, and he will likely do that again in 2024. So although I don't expect the margin to increase by too much, I think there's a very high chance that Donald Trump stays above 7% in both of these states. Um, moving on now, that those are all of the likely states actually for Donald Trump, but I do have one more for Joe Biden that I didn't miss, and that is the state of Virginia's 13 electoral votes. It's going to be likely uh, for Joe Biden. It was 10.1% in 2020. 2016, it was 5.3%. Even when Tim Kaine, uh, a senator from the state of Virginia, was uh, Hillary Clinton's running mate. So I do think that in Virginia, it's almost definitely going to be uh, for Joe Biden by a likely margin that I really don't have too many doubts about. It's 13 electoral votes. Um, are going to be more secure for the Democratic Party than it has been in a decade at this point as Virginia continues to shift more and more uh, to the left. So this puts Joe Biden up at 212 electoral votes and Donald Trump at 149. Uh, moving down to the lean states, I want to start off by giving Donald Trump his lean states of Texas and Florida. So both of these states, I think, are going to be big pickups for Donald Trump. Uh, in the state of Texas, its 40 electoral votes will be crucial um, in a potential victory for the former president. In the state of Texas, he won by 5.6%. This was a very, very disappointing margin. 2016, he won by 9%, so not too great. Um, 2012, Mitt Romney won it by 15.8%, and 2008, even John McCain won it by 11.8%, and of course, during the Bush era, it was very solid red. Uh, 1996 and 1992, of course, were a lot closer, um, but this margin for Donald Trump in 2020 really was one of the worst that we've seen for a Republican in a very, very long time, and so I don't think he will do too much better, but it won't go under 2%. I think that is a pipe dream for the Democratic Party, um, but as of right now, I do think that Texas's 40 electoral votes will remain for Donald Donald Trump and Donald Trump in the state of Florida. This is really one of the only, I believe, five or six states that he performed better in in 2020 is the state of Florida, and it's now 30 electoral votes in 2024. He was able to win by 3.4%, doubling his 1.2% margin from 2016. And Florida, which has been a swing state for a very long time, um, I think is shifting more and more to the right, especially with Ron DeSantis as its popular Republican governor. So in the state of Florida, Donald Trump is going to win this state. I think that unless something major occurs there, uh, Joe Biden is not going to be able to pull back the Latino vote, the Cuban vote, especially in Miami-Dade County, that will be able to get him those votes back for the Democrats. And so because of that, I think Donald Trump right now is definitely favored to win in the state of Florida. Um, and the final lean state I have on this map for Donald Trump is the state of North Carolina. I think that the margin will be over 2%. In 2016, he defeated Hillary Clinton here by 3.7%. However, in 2020, he was a only able to win it by 1.3%. So although 2020 was a little bit lower, I think 2024, North Carolina really does not show too many signs of budging at this point. It has been Republican for a little bit now. 2008 was the only time in which a Democrat won by 0.33%. Uh, with Barack Obama, a very, very small margin before that. It has been pretty reliably red for quite a while now. So for the state of North Carolina, I think the margin will go up a little bit uh, considering um, current circumstances for Joe Biden. I think that he, uh, Donald Trump will be able to hold on to North Carolina for the GOP for at least another four years. 
and now the lean states for Joe Biden, starting off with the states of Minnesota and Nebraska and New Hampshire. So both these two states, I think, will be won by Joe Biden. Minnesota is the state with the longest uh, Democratic voting history, as it was the only state that Walter Mondale won in 1984. So for both of these two states, I think it's pretty clear the Democratic Party is going to win. Although New Hampshire was very close in 2016 with Hillary Clinton winning by, by less than half a percentage point, Joe Biden won by over 7% in 2020, and he did the same in Minnesota. So um, in Minnesota, it was a margin of 7.1 and 7.4 in New Hampshire. I think that he will win them by less than 7%, but I think they'll both be victories for Joe Biden nonetheless. And the final lean state on this map is the state of Michigan. It's 15 electoral votes I will be giving uh, to Joe Biden, putting him up at 241. This was to say that Joe Biden was able to flip back in 2020, winning it by 2.8%. I don't think a major change will be occurring in Michigan in 2024. And now both candidates are relatively even at this point, and we have, of course, the final four states that will determine the outcome of this election. So I'm going to start off by giving Joe Biden the state of Nevada by a tilt margin. I think that he will win the state by a very small margin, but I do think that 2024 he will be able to survive. 2020 and 2016 were both 2.4% margins for Biden and Clinton, while in 2008, Barack Obama won it by 12.5%. So although Nevada is not as blue as it was during the Obama era, it is still more or less a more blue state, definitely a lot more Democratic than it is Republican, uh, which is why I do think Joe Biden will still win it. I just think the margin will unfortunately go down a little bit. Uh, unfortunate for for the Democratic Party. Uh, as for the Republicans, I will be giving Donald Trump the state of Wisconsin. I do think that he will be able to flip Wisconsin back. Uh, Wisconsin had been voting Democrat for almost 30 years until 2016, when Trump won it by 0.76%. This was his largest victory in the three Rust Belt states. And in 2020, he did lose it by 0.63% to Joe Biden. So Trump's margin of victory in 2016 was higher than Biden's in 2020, which I do think is pretty surprising, but I think that Joe Biden definitely was able to get this done and flip Wisconsin back for the Democratic Party at least for another four years. Uh, Pennsylvania is able to flip back as well, which I will cover in just a moment here. It's 1.2 electoral votes, I think definitely, or not 1.2, it's 20 electoral votes and 19 in 2024, I think will, of course, again, be very crucial in deciding uh, where the presidency goes. Uh, and my fourth state, I'm in five, because we also, of course, have the state of Georgia, which uh, we will, of course, cover as well. Um, so for the state of Pennsylvania, I will also categorize it as a tilt state for Joe Biden. I do think that he will be able to win it. I think the margin will be close to Nevada. I think it'll be a very small margin, maybe even 1%. But I don't think that Donald Trump will have to flip Pennsylvania back in 2024. This is, of course, Joe Biden's home state, uh, the state in which he was born in. And finally, to give Joe Biden the presidency, I will be giving him the state of Georgia. I do think Georgia will once again go for the Democratic Party. Um, they have had many recent successes, both Senate seats there as well as in 2020, and same for Arizona. Both these states have now two Democratic senators as well as uh, winning you know, as well as them both going to the Democratic Party on the presidential level in 2020. So 2024, I think that Biden will be able to slightly edge out victories in both these states, as these are two states that have been trending to the left for quite a while now. So this was Joe Biden up at 293 electoral votes to Donald Trump's 245. So this is my updated prediction for the 2024 presidential election between incumbent President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump. So thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Make sure you like it down below if you enjoyed it. Comment down down below who you think will win in 2024 between Biden and Trump. Subscribe to my channel if you have not, and I'll see you guys in the next video.